it's like that's your you know that's your your thing and that's what you do most of the time um but but i guess i don't know it's been it's been a while now and um we've just been just been working on stuff at home um do you know we sort of just we communicate and we we've we've done the bulk of the album already like the sick puppies so thankfully that's kind of done otherwise we'd sort of still be you know trying to go back and forth and trying to make that happen which is which is tough um you know not seeing each other and stuff like that but luckily yeah just back and forth you know i think people are able to sort of do that a little more now they're sort of used to that you know like live streaming like this yeah. and uh even writing back and forth that's been sort of interesting doing that kind of stuff um but but you know jamming in a room that's that's you know that hasn't happened um so yeah just sort of just trying to find ways to keep doing it i guess what yeah. about you guys I, i've been sitting in my basement since march <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of this this is about yeah. the cni back and forth uh I were, you guys, were you guys um pretty far along with the record before COVID, or was it did you like kind of use that time more specifically to finish yeah we we actually were luckily i, I know other bands that have just started their writing process which mm -hmm. I, i'm sure that makes a huge difference in, in having to not you know what i mean i'm sure that you know going to studios even it's it's just it's so weird now like i know some friends that have gone and and just uh, just anywhere really you just have to do that whole process and there's like limited people and it's not the same sort of yeah. thing so you can't yeah. really get too much done um yeah but is it, is it is it is it um you know, in terms of like the writing process, are you guys on Zoom kind of bouncing ideas back and forth? Or are you sending sessions back and forth? Or how, what's yeah. what's the primary like method of doing that? I know everybody has their own work medium that they like to work in. Right, that has been very helpful for sure. Like and anything really, even if it's just like bouncing ideas back and forth. Um, but we have a lot of it, most of it's really done. So it's kind of like, we're just sort of going, well, we want to, you know what what we're sort of gearing up for which is kind of difficult because it's 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 the live portion of it you know like getting together doing that stuff um as soon as is there's like some sort of go ahead on shows because i know it's it's not like other shows are uh, postponed not even i think they're even tentative some shows for other bands that i've i've heard tentatively for next year but yeah. even then you, you kind of don't even you don't know so we're just sort of trying to you know um, get ideas for the show and just just sort of do the, the background stuff at the moment. Yeah. Um, but as soon as that, you know, as soon as that starts to open back up, whenever that might be, I'm sure it's a slow process. Um, yeah, we, we'll, we'll release the album and sort of get going because it's just, it's just been too long. Yeah. Have you noticed anything uh, in the writing process or even just in band camaraderie, any positives that have come from COVID? Anything that has kind of changed for the better? that you guys want to like adapt moving forward? Yeah, that's a good question. I think um, personally and, and band wise too, it's just, it's especially at the beginning, it forces everyone to like, and I'm sure you guys sort of feel the same too. Like you slow down a lot and, and all the, all the extra stuff that you do during the day or whatever, it's, it's been cut out. And so you, you kind of like, okay, so you're back to basics kind of thing. You know what I mean? So it's kind of yeah. been like a bit of a, rebuilding process in that respect which is good because you you sort of you realize okay i really enjoy doing this wow i really miss this it helps you focus a little more at least for me it's been a little bit of that i mean it's mm -hmm. been you know not to it's not all been like you know fantastic and peaches and ice cream it's been it's been yeah. difficult for sure um much like everyone else but um i think it's been yeah you know, overall good for good for growth i would say yeah I yeah. totally agree. I feel like artists that I'll have in here that I'm producing or talking with Dino or talking with our other Ampeg artists, it's uh, it's that per like the personal part of everything has really been enhanced. I feel like even just walking down the street, True. mask on yeah. <laughs> to mask on to somebody else, it's like you can just tell in their eyes what people are at, like looking outward and like actually, uh, at least for the most part, from what I've experienced, people are a lot nicer, a lot uh, more yeah. prone to interact, I guess, than they used to be. That's so true, actually. Now that you mentioned that, that is, it's really true. Like, definitely personal interactions, but even like on the phone or, yeah, it seems like everyone's present. Whereas mm -hmm. before, people were so busy. It was like this rat race, like, ah, like everyone's busy going on to the next thing that the interactions were quite, sometimes pretty hollow. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which is, you know, 
subjective, I guess. But yeah, I've definitely noticed that too. Yeah, it's it's it's. I mean, it's, I'm sure, like for a lot of people, just their lifestyle and their life slowed right down. You know, I know, I know in 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 my own personal life and and playing and whatnot. You know, um, everything obviously everything came to a screeching halt, but it kind of let everybody kind of reevaluate. Um, you know everything's slower now. Um, I, I spend obviously being home. I spend more time with my family. I spend more time in my studio. Uh, and actually we had, we had an interesting conversation with, uh, with Rudy Sarzo in, in the last SVT time. And he brought up a really good point about how this whole thing as sucky as it is and, and what's going on, you know, when you try and look at the good that's coming out of it, maybe, the catalyst for new innovations in how people interact in terms of you know, not necessarily like always being communicating via cameras and computers, but, you know, sharing information. And we've always had this technology, but in the last six months, we've had to improve the technology because everybody's kind of been forced to use it. So it'd be interesting to see how this, especially in the recording industry and the music business and the production business, what advancements, I mean, it may be something that we, we don't even foresee right now. Mm -hmm. but a year down the road, you know, we look back at this and go, Hey, wait a second, this could be used for this type of application in a live performance. And um, you never know. I mean, you are always just trying to look at the positive side of things as, as bad as they are. Um, totally. Yeah. No, you're absolutely right. Yeah, like as as much as as much as it's bad, it's been bad. There's also you're right, so much good and and even on the personal front, like you were talking about Dom. Um, but yeah, let's see what what happens in yeah. the tech world. What's yeah. Up? Sorry, go ahead, Dino. No, you go for it. Go ahead. I was just gonna ask. I think I know the answer to this already by what we were talking about earlier. But on the flip side of that, like, what do you miss the most uh, about? Oh. <laughs> yeah, not being, being able to do whatever because because of COVID? Oh gosh. I, okay. So yeah, traveling, that's the, probably the number one thing, uh, travel on tour, that kind of thing, because you don't realize how much, it, you know, you just, you're on autopilot sometimes when you're, you're, it's great and you're, you're, you're traveling and stuff and, and whatever. But then as soon as that stops and you can't do that anymore, it's not like that you're not doing it, but you can't do that. And you don't know when you can, it mm -hmm. definitely makes you reflect and go, Oh, was that was really great actually you know like yeah, even, yeah. even if you're like you know sleepless days or whatever you're traveling and it's like at the time you look back on photos you're like that that was really fun and um yeah i think i just i really miss just the shows with people and traveling and you know meeting everyone and stuff it's just yeah it's, it's it was so great so what about you guys traveling for me too you yeah. know just with, with, with the gig with Ampeg and, you know, just traveling, going into music stores and back and forth to the West Coast. That's, especially this time of year where it starts getting cold in New England, I really am going to miss going out to California. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for me, it's what we talked about with the, the 810. It's like playing live and feeling the air behind you. Yeah. That's what I miss so much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that too. That too, yeah. So, hey, we got a question sure. here uh, on YouTube from Rodrigo Pichardo. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right here, Rodrigo. But it says, hi, Emma. Big fan here. I'm not sure how related to the topic of discussion this question is, as every question is related here. But how have you been able to maintain your creativity as an artist during the pandemic? Hmm. I like that question. Um I guess what I was saying earlier with with sometimes you're you do something like every day and you're kind of in a mode and um, because everything is just kind of like second nature and stuff and then it's only when everything stops and you, you're you're forced to sort of reevaluate I guess because you can't do certain things um, and I think like with anything when you have to sit with something the answers come and and just with that I've I think I've just been able to just go to go back to the drawing board back to square one and and i 
you know, it's rarely when you when you start something and then you're so you're like you're you know you're a decade like doing whatever and would you go back and and revisit when you first started or why and how you felt and what inspired you and I've actually just kind of gone back to that which is somehow which is like kind of crazy. Um, I love that. Yeah, I don't know. Just yeah, just back to the roots, um, just musically, and then I've just started um, just playing a little differently. That's exploring just different styles and. Actually, um, for the first time, which is crazy, um, started playing a five string because I usually just always stuck with that four string, you know what I mean? So yeah. that has opened up a lot for me, which is, yeah, it's been awesome. I love that. That ans actually answers the next question I was going to ask because we had John Button on here. He was talking about uh, using like a third finger approach rhythmically and Daryl was talking about s something specific too. Eva's learning um, like uh, pro tools and like uh, producing more because she she hadn't taken that on so it's really cool to see all these artists where as uh as fans uh, of you guys and everything i think everybody probably thinks like oh they got it all figured out like you know they not yeah, not, no. not that there's nowhere to go creatively <laughs> but it's like technically wise it's that's mm -hmm. a cool surprise i think to hear uh you know these awesome artists like digging in and, and learning new techniques and really like you're saying going back to basics like being a kid again and just kind of discovering your instrument all over again. I think that's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's been, it's been a long time since I've had that childlike wonder for it. Like, you know how something you, you're doing something for so long, it kind of ebbs and flows, you know what I mean? Creativity, <laughs> inspiration and all that. And um, depending on what's happening in your life, all of that affects that, I think. And, but it's always there, but I think this pandemic is sort of, yeah, it, it's been kind of like a blessing in a way. Cause I wouldn't have probably never picked up a five string or even tried just, just having the time to, cause you know, it takes that, time to sit usually there's always something to do during the day i mean i'm, I'm sure you guys know but to, to actually have that time to sit and like toy around with something it's been yeah. Awesome. yeah yeah so you i i know you you've always been primarily a four string player but so you've never really touched a five string or or like obviously not live but so this yeah, is a I, I <laughs> It is. I'm kind of a creature of habit, I've realized, and I'm, it's been like years. I'm like, wow, I've really just been playing a four string the whole time. And, and not that I didn't want to open my mind to it, but it was just like there were so many other things that had to be, you know, there's like other aspects. Like like mm -hmm. like you were saying, Dom, like, you know, getting into like producing your own demos or like learning how to do that or um, songwriting or all of that stuff, the extra stuff rather than the actual instrument and with, I don't know like for me I don't know why I haven't a lot of people have said yeah you should probably do a five string and I've been like yeah yeah I guess I should but <laughs> this is the first time I actually did it. <laughs> that's awesome I love that that you're, that you're doing that that's really cool that's all awesome. yeah that is it's I'll, I'll tell you a quick five string story when I when I first started going to um to MI in Hollywood I was a four string player for years oh, I mean that's all played and like an idiot i decided i'm gonna go into school with a five string and <laughs> completely like just completely screwed myself up <laughs> all of my classes and all of my juries it's like you know not only you're learning new material but now you're trying to learn it on an instrument that you're not familiar with and and the one the i remember the one pe great piece of advice that one of my instructors gave me is like if you really want to learn five string Put all your four strings away, and don't don't keep on bouncing back and forth because you just you keep on confusing yourself. Just put all your four strings away, and just play the five string. And I did that, you know, and it worked eventually. But it was like of all times in my musical career, what a, the worst time. At least you're doing it smart, you know. You're like, all right, I have time to sit down and really figure this out. I'm not bringing on tour. I'm not trying to work it in like in critical performances or anything like that. So. Right. <laughs> That's funny. I'm the opposite. I, 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 yeah. Oh no. Go ahead. No. Go ahead. Sorry. No. This shows oh, you. Oh, no, go just, ahead. <laughs> no. I was just gonna say like with, like I probably would have done the same thing because it's like oh well, it's just an extra string like I mean you know what I mean yeah. you think oh okay cool I'll just but then when you actually because add to add to that actually um I I've been in my whole <clears> like time playing bass with sick puppies it's been a different tuning the whole time it's been cgcf drop c oh, okay. and to try and and i'm like oh to try and transpose that to a to a regular tune five string is like oh my yeah. gosh this is i can't i don't even know what's happening 
And oh, so wow. I yeah, that's, that's hard. <laughs> that's very hard. <laughs> it is. So that's why when I went to the to, to a regular tune five string, I'm like, I don't, this is, this is going to take some time. So sure. yeah, there's, um, but yeah, what were you going to say? I was say like, I, I was a weirdo who started on five actually. And my two mm. primary bases, I had a five string and a four fretless. I was just a weirdo. <laughs> and then, <laughs> uh, and then I went to play with my first, like my first tour tour as a, bassist um i learned all these parts from the bassist at the time was just uh kind of migrating towards being a, a secondary vocalist and he like didn't want to play the bass parts anymore i thought he had like i learned everything from a five string perspective because it just sounded like he was doing everything with five string and then he would turn around at certain parts and he'd be like you're totally cheating man like because he would play these really crazy complicated parts that i was like oh he's just like down here doing whatever but it was so funny. It was like this ongoing thing where he just would turn around and be like, cheater. He would just always call, it, call me cheater. <laughs> <laughs> why? Cheating because why? You're using a flash Because you, instead of like sliding up and down the neck a ton, you can just oh, go okay. basically down right. that octave. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Right, like, right. In one position. And so yeah. that's funny. Now, do, are all your basses tuned that way, Emma? Or do you, do you switch depending on the tune? Pretty much all CGCF except for one song. Um, one song in the in the in the show, which is uh, A sharp, which I never really mess with because it's just a little t too low. Like uh, for that song, it works, but yeah, I just stick. I usually just stick with CGCF, and and you you're it imprints like there's just the shapes and and where you go, and then when you mm -hmm. switch, it's like it's like kind of learning a new instrument, sort of. It's well, especially if you're doing like <laughs> open string picking too. Mm. Do you? Do you find like the tension of the five versus the yes. open low? Yeah. It, do you prefer it or do you like thing. the, yeah, that's gotta I be I friggin' love it. Yeah, <laughs> I, I I didn't know what I was missing, honestly, with the five string, like the ten, the tension, exactly. And you can, it's kind of like inching towards guitar, but you've still got the bass elements and the percussive elements yeah. you can use. But yeah, <clears> I, I love it. It's, it's, yeah, that's it's cool. Awesome. Are you using any kind of special gauge strings for that tuning or? No, 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 no. Oh, do you mean do you mean for the four string? Yeah, for the four string rather. I use the yeah. I basically use like um a five string set, but on a four string. I just take the yeah. It's pretty. It's actually kind of ridiculously. <laughs> it's, too, it's kind of too much. I realize going back and forth. I'm like, wow, that really because you're right. The, the tension of it is completely different. Makes you play different. You know, you yeah. can't do certain things. And um, I'm basically just realizing what I'm missing out on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know, I, I, I got to say, like, sometimes playing a five string and using your low D on your third fret is a lot different. And you can play it you, like certain passages and certain tunes, especially, will, will translate differently than just taking a four string and tuning down your E string down to low D. Yeah. You know what I mean? I like, like that low D, the low open yeah. feels so much bigger a lot yeah. of times yeah yeah yep. but you can't get the same like quick transient out of it that you can if right. you're on a five string right right we have yeah. another person say uh the wheeled headbanger said four four stringer for years the last two i have migrated to six so that's your next Whoa. step is like getting the six string. Uh, <laughs> i've seen yeah i've seen hey, you can that. always just add a lower string right. <laughs> instead of Instead of going up, <laughs> that's going to be in the next like five, ten years, probably. <laughs> yeah. If I ever get to it. <laughs> that and, and if you really want to screw with yourself, you you get a six string fretless, and oh my gosh, you got about <laughs> done. You know, oh gosh, yeah. I, I, I used to play a gig with a, a buddy of mine. I still gig with him around town here every now and then, but he's got perfect pitch. And uh, every time I knew I'd have a gig with him, I'd bring a fretless just to mess with him. Just to mess with him. <laughs> yeah, just, just, I mean, no matter how good you think your intonation is to somebody with perfect pitch, it drives them absolutely crazy. And, and on top yeah. of that, try, I used to think like, cause I started on five string and then a four string fretless. And then I got this cool like custom fretless. And I was like, I'm gonna go, I like just got it. And like the next week I had a gig, I'm like, I'm gonna go out and play and sing with this. Like this is, <laughs> Sting, Sting's my <laughs> idol. He did this. I can do this. And it was yeah. like the most torturous experience ever. I was just like, oh, gosh, this is, why really did funny. I do this to myself? And then yeah. trying to sing with it, it was like, yeah. That's, that's, a, takes, that's an interesting point. I never, a whole never thought about that. Yeah. Speaking of gear, let's um, let's uh, let's switch over to Ampeg here real quick. Because obviously this is an Ampeg broadcast and people are talking about Ampeg. And, and anyways... 
Um, what? So what is your live rig right now, if you recall? <laughs> Uh, it is a just um, SVT Classic, just basic the basics, um, and then two four tens. That that's okay. kind of been yeah, it's plenty. <laughs> yeah, standard it's standard. Plenty. And what's your yeah. mindset behind the two four tens versus an eight ten? Is it just I modular like it, to, to be able it, to switch it up? I think just to me, it's just tighter because I like to slap and and I like the percussive elements of of bass so. Four tens just are to me a little tighter. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. We had a we have a comment from Mason Pitts. Uh, hey Emma, what's your current home? Do antique rig any input on a glass pedal that we're not worried about? No I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> they're asking. We asked your live rig. What's your current home studio antique rig? Um. I see a little mini I stack mean... there. Yeah, like I don't that that's kind of just for I don't really call, record with that. Um, that's just for like jamming at home. Can you see it? A little, little mini, yeah, little yeah, mini totally. stack. It's probably a little yeah. little. Um, that's yeah. I think that's super cute. The little mini stack. I love it. Um, other than that, yeah, I just just little little combo little combo amp that um, we're using at the moment. But um, I don't really I don't know. I just sort of sort of jam with with it. Not not really. Uh, I don't really record any any like anything in the box kind of thing. Gotcha. That's cool. Do yeah. you uh the uh Mason mentioned the dark glass luminal. Do you have any other like pedal like are you growing your pedal collection right now? Is there anything specific that you're like, this is so cool, I'm I'm deep in it right now? Um, I don't yeah, I do yes. Actually no, I don't have that. Uh, I, I mainly just in the just plugins. The plugin, the dark glass plugin, is mm -hmm. just what I use for just just to just get quickly get a sound. Yeah. Um, nothing too crazy, but that that's that's the one. The dark glass. Uh, I know they've got um, neural DSP. They've got parallax too, but the dark glass plugin is probably my fave. Yeah. Cool. We gotta send you some MPEG pedals, Emma. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yeah. That would be that would be awesome. And I saw you, you. You guys had a um, was it a distortion? Yeah, we got uh, or? we got a compressor, a distortion, a um, a chorus, which I absolutely love. And uh, we basically have like the distortion inside of a DI, and then we also have like a preamp pedal. Yeah, right, I don't think I'm yes. miss, missing anything there, right? You know? No, yeah. you're right. Yeah, it's the the SCR DI, which is the the DI pedal, and then the scrambler, the preamp, and then the chorus and the compressor. Which one's the scrambler? That that's the is that the the DI pedal? That's the, that's the over, yeah, that's the overdrive. Yeah, mm, yeah. Nice. The scrambler yeah. is the overdrive pedal, but people also refer to the SCR DI as the scrambler as well. But oh, that's okay. that's oh, I have it back here. That's the bigger pedal with the DI right. and the amp built in and everything. So yeah, oh that's cool. Yeah, is that yeah. one that you can? Is that one that you can? Um, I know some some pedals you can just plug headphones directly into it and then align mm -hmm. in so it's like a practice little practice Absolutely. thing yeah yes. yeah that that that's cool because that's yeah that's useful for sure i can't a, i can't believe our artist relations department hasn't sent you one of those we gotta get a hold of that guy <laughs> it's been <laughs> well, it's slacking because it's like yeah like <laughs> that guy look at all the gear behind you you can't give her some gear jeez <laughs> <laughs> I'm speechless. It's funny. I, I never really like practice like in the. It's it's always just oh I'll just because it's like a lot of the times it's too loud like because uh, neighbors and stuff. But it's always like in headphones in like a you know whether it's a pedal or if it's just on Logic or something. It's just yeah. like, kind of easier that way. But I would I would love yeah, to hear like cool. what's in your headphones like doo -doo 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 -doo, like the coolest like <laughs> baseline ever just like going at it and then you like zoom out and it's like. <laughs> 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 just the tech sounds, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Even those things are loud, like in a in a like you realize that you can you totally hear that through the wall too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very awesome. conscious of that because I've always grown up. Like I remember when I was when I was a lot younger when I first got into uh, bass, um, mm. I could never play with a, an amp because we'd have neighbors and stuff, and I could never yeah. play even with this tiniest amp. Like I would get complaints, so I'm like, okay, got to do it in the headphones. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. That's a, you, you know, yeah. my, my neighbors listen to all sorts of great bass playing, whether they wanted to or not. <laughs> <laughs> my my oh, parents certainly did. 
my, yeah. my cousin was a drummer and he was the one who kind of like got me into music and I we literally like learned our instruments playing together and I remember literally playing chromatic scales as like he was just like <laughs> banging on the drums I'm like man I told my mom and dad like, you must have really loved me that was there's no way that's I could deal good. with that yeah that's pretty good I gotta and say I, you know, I tell my parents now, at least, at least I wasn't a violin player. Let's put yeah. it, you know, that, that would have just been complete torture on them. That so. could be bad, yeah. <laughs> Although I think drums is probably the the most, yeah, the yeah, most like it, they could be. <laughs> totally. Like if you really want to, yeah. like I have four, I'm about to have four nephews. I have three nephews at the moment. Uh, but like I always mess with my sisters and send them like musical toys and musical instruments just to mess oh, with my nice. sisters. <laughs> They're like, yeah, he loves the drum. Thanks a lot. Like, that's all we hear. Get a full drum kit. Send a full drum yeah. kit next time. <laughs> oh, it's only a matter of time. Yeah, once they get a little older, for that's sure. Funny. Yeah. Um, now, just uh, probably how many well, how many months ago did we start working on the Heritage Project, Dom? Like a lot of months yeah. ago. Yeah, uh, <laughs> months ago. But yeah. anyways, one one thing that. A, a lot of our viewers don't uh, don't realize or probably don't understand is um, Emma was very instrumental in giving your input. Yeah. yeah, Dom's got got it right behind him there. You were very instrumental in donating your time and coming out to Calabasas and giving us your input on what you thought the perfect SVT was, which is essentially what we were trying to accomplish. So. Um, for those of you that weren't from, that aren't familiar with this, we at one point in time we had a bunch of vintage SVTs, uh, an early '69, a mid '70s, some CLs, and we had a bunch of artists come out to Calabasas to the main office and give us their their input, plugging into what they liked from each amp. And Emma was very instrumental in, in coming out and doing that as well. Um, so. The amp, the Heritage 50th, is essentially a, a product of of Emma and all these other artists that came out and gave us their input. Do you? I I know I wasn't there at that point. I Dom was in the building. They wouldn't allow me in the building. At that time. <laughs> <laughs> I was still new to the company. <laughs> We're Calabasas. still doing due diligence on him, like background yeah, checks. Yeah, you know, I was, I, was, I was cleaning the bathrooms at that point, but. Um, do you recall that visit, Emma, that when when you sat down with Dom and just kind of give us your your thoughts on that? I do, I do recall that. It was really cool. Like I like like I'm like I said before. Thanks for yeah, thanks for including me in that because definitely in some great company. And um, I don't know. Yeah, I feel I feel um, honored to to have you ask my opinion about it. And um, yeah, it's really cool. It was a cool experience testing out all the different different heads because I, I have not not tested out many of those heads i pretty much just stick to creature of habit i stick to the svt classic um yep. but yeah it was cool to sort of to actually um test it out real time in in a room uh controlled room you know what i mean like usually it's a whole bunch of stuff going on when you're testing out hands, but yeah it was a very drummers cool... yeah. <laughs> yeah but uh yeah it was awesome it was really awesome to have the, all our artists in, and especially you. I mean, when you came in, it was so funny. It was like me, uh, Steve, our, our videographer, and he was like taking photos, taking video. Uh, I forget who else was in the room, but like Emma started playing, and we just kind of like backed up and we're like, <laughs> just like watching everything. <laughs> for like, and then you're like, you know, I can keep playing if you. And we're like, yeah, yeah, keep going, keep going. Like, it was so cool <laughs> to just, and it was cool to see everyone's different approach to something that they revered as like, this is my. This is my tone maker. This is like the thing that yeah, is my yeah. sound and my signature. But it's so cool to see all the different approaches to that, basically. And um, yeah, I think you, one of your preferences, I think it was like the late, like the mid to late 70s um, CL, I think was your favorite, if I recall correctly. But it was really so, cool yeah. to, yeah, hear you just like dig into everything. Yeah, we were all just like, took a step back and like, this is so fun. Like, yeah. just hearing everyone no, was, layer through eight by tens. <laughs> yeah, like like I was saying before we went live too. At some point, we want to get you all back after COVID is done and whatnot. We want to get you all back, all together, because I know you guys all kind of came in at separate times according mm -hmm. to the schedules. But at one point, at some point, I want to coordinate having everybody come back at the same time. We'll just kind of have like a like a big SVT party, if you will. Yeah, yeah. that'd be great. Yeah, yeah, yeah I look forward to it.
It was scheduled, partially scheduled, and then like you know, Emma needed like pink M and M's, and uh, you know, not kidding. <laughs> you know we had to like keep the riders separate, you know. <laughs> <laughs> now, all, all the um, you had mentioned like with the and I, we had a uh, question from I believe Brian Troyer earlier about um, any um, album updates, which we kind of went through earlier. But you had mentioned uh, sick puppies being like not being able to see each other. Are you guys all spread out? Location wise, then we are, yeah. Um, okay. Mark, our drummer, he's in, he's here in LA, but Brian, he's uh, he's in uh, Houston. Okay. <clears throat> so yeah, sort of, yeah. We sort of thank God for you know technology and being able to zoom yeah. and uh, and send stuff back and forth. But um, yeah, but it, I mean, it works. Yeah. When you, oh, I'm sorry. I was just asking. Yeah, and you said you were almost done with the record. You guys have a. Can you talk about when you're releasing or is that a, um, you're kind of waiting to see what happens with COVID or? I think we're waiting to see what happens. Yeah. Like I'm, I know a lot of people of uh, a lot of bands and artists have done the whole release and then do the live stream thing, which is cool. Mm -hmm. And not to say that we wouldn't do that. Cause I think um, that there's been talks of doing something like that uh, in the near future, but, in, but you know, like just the whole releasing the album and touring, it kind of goes hand in hand. So we, we sort of just want to you know, yeah. see it. So, you know, in the meantime, just sort of keep keep working at our live show and just sort of bouncing ideas around with that. But yeah, just as soon as as soon as the time time's right, we want to hopefully like early next year, maybe. I mean, well, I guess we'll see. You know, yeah, what happens? Yeah, uh, you know, with hopefully, like I said, it, as soon as possible, obviously. But you know, yeah, as as everything is over. We're starting to see, like. And I know we were talking about this before we went live and everything, but, um, you know, we're starting to see small performances here and there with outdoor, you know, basically drive-in performances. You literally pull up in your car. And yeah. I, you know, I didn't say it in my Boston accent. I know. It's like, it kind of like, it was, it was just my brain. I was like, wait, who just said that? But you pull up in your car and, and you know, you just kind of, you pull out a couple lawn chairs and, and, and you watch a performance out, uh, in some of these live outdoor venues, but, uh, you know, especially around here with the weather getting cold, I know that's going to kind of wrap up pretty soon if it hasn't already. Yeah. Um, you know, even if we can get back to that, to, to some of that level, you know, but then of course you also have the financial aspect of, well, if venues are only filling up a quarter of the, you know, yeah. quarter of the seats, how does that impact them? It's, it's, it's really a sticky situation. And I think it, you know, it has to come back in a very smart way, I guess, or we have to really yeah. think of doing this in a safe and, and uh, a, a financial way too. To some yeah. Degree. I'm thinking, you know, if you're a band that's even if you're playing arenas and you bring in that crowd, then you can use this marketing to know if people need to be spread out, that amount of people can fit in a stadium spread out. So now you just do stadium tours. Here you go. There you go. <laughs> Another problem that, solved. I love that. <laughs> That is awesome. Dino and I are going on a stadium tour in 2021. <laughs> We're going to play the four of our fans. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> oh, man. that's We we had one comment that um, a lot of people talking about uh, Emma not getting enough credit as a bassist, and then on top of that, uh, slapping like Flea, which I completely agree with. Uh, <laughs> so in terms of your slap style, like, do you feel like, uh, like you're – perception of like what percentage this is such a weird question what percentage of your playing style and identity do you feel like slap encapsulates and then when did you kind of like dig into that and be like this is kind of part of my thing encapsulates um, i don't know you said car the right way so now i'm saying encapsulates i like that word <laughs> <laughs> um i guess um yeah how, how much how many percentage probably like 50 50 because i do use a pick a lot mm -hmm. of the time um as much as i would love to slap on more and during a song it's kind of like okay it's probably not appropriate to be doing that here so like um yeah it's probably 50 50 with pick but i just love um i just love the, the percussive element of it because i think deep down i just maybe maybe i um, um i should have been a drummer as well because i i not that i can play because totally suck at it, but love <laughs> drums, like love drums. And I think I just love that. And then I wanted to bring that sort of just have both 
best of both worlds kind of thing. So when mm-hmm. you slap, I feel like you can, because you can sort of um, follow fills, which I love to do because you're sort of doing that with with the drummer and that creates that that kind of percussive sound yeah. um, in, in itself. Um, but yeah, I kind of forgot a little bit of the question, but. Yeah, I know. It's what, such a long, uh, <laughs> uh, what was the other and, part of the question? And oh, like, how did you come into, like, what were your influences for, for slap? And like, how did you, yeah. what, like, there was a time where you're like, oh, this is like my thing. This is. Right, right. I think that was early on, I think, because um, I think it was just, you know, f- forming like the group and the band and, and who's going to play what, that kind of thing. And I just thought, yeah, ba- bass, bass is cool. I didn't appreciate it at the beginning. I was like, yeah, I'll, mm-hmm. you know, I'll play bass. And then as and when I was sort of getting into it, I saw like um, the very first person was Lewis Johnson, you know, from the like that, you know, back when and saw his like instructional video. And I think that's what set it off at the beginning. There was this other band in Australia a long time ago. They're not around anymore. They were called Pre-Shrunk and there were two bass players and um, a drummer wow. and yeah, it was really cool. It was like, but they were like a dance band. So okay. the, the, yeah. one, of the, one of the players was like the percussive element slapping. The other guy was doing like the melodic, like trippy stuff, which was really cool. It's really um, cool. But that was, that was probably the first time I was like, wow, that's like, yeah, really cool. And so I started to try, I was like, can, can I even try and do this? Like, let's see if I can even do it. And so I was, that, that's kind of what, what's, you know, spurred that along. And then of course, Flea and Victor Wooten, two of two mm-hmm. my, probably my biggest um, influences. Uh, Flea just because he's great. And I love the songs as well, I love Chili Peppers. Um, I loved how melodic he was, how he could be super busy, but at the same time, cause you know how you run the risk of being a bit too busy and then taking yeah. it from the song, but he yeah. really made it work for him. Um, and then Victor Wooten just, I thought he was just super innovative just the, with the way the, the double thumb thing. I can't do that. Like I, I've just, I, you know how you just stop the video and go, how is yeah. he doing that? <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> um, that I still do that. I'm like, okay, just, and he would just, the, cause to me, I'm like, how that, cause it kind of hurts. You know what I mean? Yeah. When you try yeah, to yeah. do that, yep. um, different to just regular slapping. And so I just, and then the recent, not recently, but five, six years ago, I met him for the first time and I thought I saw a photo super, yeah of both of you guys yeah yeah my he like he was he was my hero super sweet guy and I was just like okay this is like full circle moment but yeah those are the two guys that really I really looked up to that's really cool I still do so far from what I've heard either both of them are heroes that you are supposed to meet because they're super sweet guys yeah oh I haven't heard. met Flea yet have you have yeah you? I've, I've not personally met her I've just like continually heard great things yeah yeah, yeah I, I have to yeah. and Obviously, you know, Victor, he, he's a staple at the NAM show. So, you know, you get to see yeah. him. And actually, I not um, he does a camp once a year or something. Actually, it might be a couple of times a year now. He has a camp in Nashville that people go to. It's a nature camp. And you just you go there, that, yeah. and you hang out, and he invites, you know, all these great bass players, Chuck Rainey and uh, Stanley Clark and – and literally you camp out in, in his campground or his camp, his woods, whatever it is. I've never done it, but and then <laughs> yeah. during the day you play music. And it's like everybody that I know that has done it has said it's such an uplifting experience, not just musically, but spiritually. Because he is, Victor's a very, he seems like a very spiritual person too. Yeah. He does. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. I saw an, an, I think it was like some type of instructional thing that he was doing on YouTube and he, he had a bunch of students and he was sitting and he was like, okay, now you take a solo for a minute or something. And he was like so chill and zen about it. And the kid, like he was so young and he was just like sweating and like, cause everybody else just stopped playing and it was like his time to do it. And I was like, dude, I feel you. Like I would be in the same boat. Yeah, I would be freaking out too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now you had mentioned Lewis Johnson, it, it, like, so Lewis was, was, would you consider him like one of your very first influences or? Actually, he, how that came about was I saw that band pre-shrunk that I mentioned earlier at a, at a show. And for some, this was back in Australia, back in Sydney, many, many years ago. And I somehow um, were able to sort of like hang out with them afterwards, like after the show, because I wanted to ask them about what bases they use and, and whatnot. And um, 
they told me about Lewis Johnson. They were like, oh, okay, if you want to learn, just uh, just check out Lewis Johnson, the instructional video. So I was like, okay, Lewis Johnson, instructional video. So I went home and I did just that. And um, that was sort of the first introduction to so it. So cool. That is so cool. That you actually, like, that that guy had no idea that he was, like, creating a you. <laughs> By just telling you, like, yeah, go listen to these things. That's, that's <laughs> nice. Yeah, Not, was, that, that's yeah. a miracle in itself, but more so there was a band with you said two bassists and a drummer and there was a female at their concert (laughs) it's a miracle in itself i know it's incredible that were yeah they were obscure like band from melbourne Melbourne, australia that is and they were they were they were uh a local australian band because we've never heard australian band yeah yeah i know this was years back and i don't think they ever really toured over here i think they were just sort of Australian band, but um, yeah. Okay. All right. I'll have to, how often do you get back to Australia? Obviously not, not often. Now, but, you know. <laughs> not now. It was yeah. funny, actually. The last time I was there, I was visiting my parents. Uh, I usually try and get back once a year at least. Okay. Um, but I, I actually went back in February of this year. So mm-hmm. right around about the time where this stuff started happening, and I was over there. It hadn't sort of hit here yet. And I remember I was there, and um, I was – like on the phone to my boyfriend going, you know, it's, they're, they're freaking out over here because all the toilet paper is gone. Or, and you know what I mean? Like, I'm like, this is crazy. And I, and I actually like, I went to the, cause for my parents, like I was like, I have to get some toilet paper. So I, I got up at like seven in the morning to get there right when it, right when it opened. Um, just because I was like, well, they can't, I don't want them to make, you know what I mean? So, and literally when they opened the doors, like people were just like running and I was like, wow really like and then and then i was like telling people over here and 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 they're like that's crazy and then literally like a month later the same thing happened here and i got back hit back just in time because i i flew back on the 15th of march and literally like a day or two oh, later, wow. locked down Boston anyway. yeah. so i was like wow so it was yeah, you and then flying just yeah, it was made it. Scary, yeah. But yeah we we joke about like which uh you can like timestamp different eras of COVID, even though what it's been like seven <laughs> months or so. There was like Tiger yeah. King era of COVID. Yeah, there yeah. Was, like toilet paper shortage. COVID. There's like mask shortage. COVID. <laughs> oh, right. Exactly. It's like now everybody's got like three masks and stylish masks yeah. now. Tiger King seems like so long ago. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. This is a great, great question that just came up. I was actually just about to ask this. Uh, Bernardo asks. Yep. Um, uh, he would like Emma to share about how Ampeg Tone brings out the best of her playing and how she likes uh, to set the EQ to sit in the mix or to yeah. not sit in the mix. I don't know. Sit in the mix, yeah. Oh, how? Um... Like, do you have a philosophy behind how you're setting your EQ to interact with the band? Is it that like more of you do your thing and then the producer makes that? Yeah, yeah if it's all. live, it's definitely um, <clears throat> our sound guy is sort of. Um, takes care of that but in terms like just on stage I think I usually just yeah just do the um, slightly slightly scooped but in terms of EQ but that's yeah. not it because it's, it's like when you switch on the SVD classic it's pretty much all there so you don't, you don't really have to I don't like messing around too much because it's like yeah. things get messed up and 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 then you're like oh what was it again and, and then you have to sort of I just sort of set and forget kind of thing but um yeah yeah I, I and I think this might help with Bernardo's question too. But I also was going to ask: with Sick Puppies being primarily a three-piece, like do you not just EQ, but your approach in playing? Do you approach it differently to fill more sonic space, or you know, like what what is your approach to like? Hey, there's only three of us and and two instruments, you know, two melodic or harmonic harmony instruments, if you will, and percussion, how, how, what am I going to do to fill this space? For if sure. Yeah, definitely, definitely have to keep that in, into account. And we always, it's funny. We always talk about that too. It's like, Oh, we've only got like, yeah, three, three of us and one guitar. And so, so um, yeah, I guess I would sort of, and that's kind of all I've, all I've known. I haven't really been in any other band. So yep. um, let alone like a lot of other members that can fill in the space. Uh, especially like more guitars but yeah definitely the bass has to sort of make sure that it doesn't drop out at any point so i'll have to just maybe the guitar can do that and we'll, we'll have some you know it's it's not too too difficult though it's pretty self, self-explanatory i'll just keep down the you know 
the base low end kind of thing and then maybe follow some things but then we'll be like ah that kind of like takes it away because i'm following too much of the guitar so i'll do this instead and yeah there's a little bit of that yeah gotcha. yeah that's cool you and i gotta say you you have i mean your your tone on recordings is like is spot on for 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 what you know for the music and everything and and the format it's like your bass just sits perfectly in the mix is is like just the right amount of lows right right amount of highs and everybody kind of has their their distinct tone which i think you do as well but it's just it sits perfectly in in that environment if you will for oh, black nice. yeah yeah i pre really appreciate great. that yeah. it's um I, I loved i just love the just 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 a little bit of breakup and i'm pretty I'm pretty simple like that. It's just just a little <laughs> low, high, a little bit of breakup, and, that, and and as long as I think the the one thing that I've had to grapple with a little bit, which as the classic is perfect for, is that you know how sometimes you'll play with fingers or pick, and that tone will be great for that. But then in the other part of the song, you're slapping, and, and that's yeah. a completely different um, thing happening. Um, the classic is good because again, I like to set and forget to get just the right. You can sort of set it where it works for both which I love. That is, so a, I'm pretty. so happy you brought that up because it's such a hard thing to tackle. Like it always feels like you almost have to, the second you go to slap, have something to boost the lows and scoop it out a little right. bit and like do that instantly. And I feel like it's probably the fact that I feel like in, in a lot of SVTs and tube amps, there's this natural compression going on because of the tubes. That feels like maybe it kind of takes that, takes care of that. It's almost like glue in a way yeah. and, and it, it kind of just like mushes that together in the best way. But yeah, that is a yeah. really hard thing to try to even out yeah it's yeah, hard to do too so, yeah yeah um but yeah you're right tom that's you know especially with an all tube amp there is sort of that natural compression there that you know going from that to like a solid state amp and trying that same approach that's why a lot of our solid state amps like the you know the the four pro and and all the portaflex stuff they have built-in compression on them yeah so you can dial that in right on the front of the amp you know that's why we build a compressor pedal too now. <laughs> there <you go>. Nice, <laughs> nice. <laughs> I had to throw it in. Come on, no, that's what we're here yeah. for. Yeah, <laughs> of course. So, I and then, I, I gotta say, this is like, this is awesome because, for for my own selfish reasons, I'll say is, I don't know how many Nam shows Emma, you guys would come in, and it's like. You know, you're getting bombarded. I'm getting bombarded. We have like maybe five minutes to like, hey, how you doing? Everything cool? Yeah. This, is, this has actually been very special because I want to say probably the last five or six NAM shows, we've kind of had that exchange where it's like, great to see you, hugs, kisses, this, that. And this is the first time we've actually been able to just kind of sit down and talk and, and, and have a conversation, you know? True. So I really appreciate no, I, you. I've of course, yeah. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it too. And, and you're right; it has been like every year, like maybe five, ten minutes once a year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it's yeah. been, but that's been fine. That's been good too. But I'm, yeah, I appreciate yeah. being able to do this. It's been good. Yeah. yeah, that's and of course, no, no Nam show this year. So yeah, we'll not, I have to do these. Not have to. Ask you, <laughs> yeah. Did go ahead. you? Because the last Nam show, like. You mentioned something on Facebook about feeling a little. The you called it namthrax. I was gonna. I was gonna bring that back. Um, I was gonna say well, that I am pretty convinced that that was COVID. I yeah. was gonna say. Do you think that maybe that was it? Well, you know, it 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 um it literally came on in a matter of twenty four hours. The I was coughing and hacking. And then Saturday, I started developing a fever. And by Saturday night, I was in a full-blown fever, sweating in my hotel room. No. Then I went, I went to the Minute Clinic the next morning, and they prescribed um, some kind of flu medicine. I forget what, what it was called. But she said, make sure you start this right away. Because nobody knew co what COVID was. Yeah, that wasn't even a thing. No. Yeah. no. Um, so I took the medicine, and I felt good enough the next day that was that was a Monday because I missed Nam on Sunday. I was so sick, um, yeah. and then I flew that week. So who knows? You know, it's like I I yeah. have a and 
and done the the uh, the antibodies tests. And like my doctor said, he said at this point it's kind of a moot point. It yeah. it wouldn't show yeah. up. Days. But yeah. who knows? Yeah. yeah. I'm convinced that there was some form of that floating around the show because people were dropping like flies. Yeah, so, and we yeah. we always joke about anthrax, but it was different this year. It was like yeah. symptoms yeah. were different. Yeah, uh, I felt like I was in the clear after. Like Dino was sick during the show. I was sick last year during the show, like the year prior, and then I felt right. like I dodged the bullet. And then like the second I got back, like a, a few days later, it was like all the symptoms that they've described. I had, and oh, then, really? but then you don't, you know, it wasn't a thing at the time. So then months later, it's like, oh, COVID. And I was like, oh yeah, I yeah. think I'm pretty sure that was it. Yeah. It could yeah. have very well been, been it. Could now you well didn't get sick yeah. at all, did you, Emma? I didn't, you know, you know, it was funny though. I did, I only went for one day. I usually go for one day and um, I knew about it because I've been reading about it because I knew that I had to fly to Australia. So I, I somehow knew about it and I thought to myself, you know, if anywhere it would be at NAM, like <laughs> you know what I mean? It was going through my head. So true. So I was curious about that. Yeah. yeah. That's funny. That's probably There's it. So many people traveling from so many different parts of the world and and everyone's interacting yeah. and shaking hands and touching right, gear. Shaking hands, talking. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I mean it, that's the perfect environment for that. So perfect. Anyway. I know. Yeah. But yeah, unfortunately, no, you know, that's the saddest part about NAM is not having NAM is not being able to reconnect with, with friends you get yeah. to see a year, you know, yeah. um, True. lugging eight tens in and out of the convention center. <laughs> I, you truly won't mess. Yeah. <laughs> <I bet. laughs> so, but uh, any plans for Halloween this year? Are you a big Halloween person? Um, I'm, I'm not really, but, um, it's funny cause like in Australia, we don't really celebrate it too much. It's only a little bit of trick or treating and, and that. And then when I came over here, I was like, wow, this is a real thing. Like everyone likes to dress up and do the big, you know, did do all that. But, um, oh, we're just probably just going to carve some pumpkins and, um, watch some horror movies. Yeah. That's, that's probably cool. What we'll do. That's so, right. What about you guys? It's on a Saturday and it's on a Saturday with a full moon. And oh, oh, nice. Right? I that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is there's two full moons in the month. How do I know all this stuff? Well, because my daughter is complete <laughs> Halloween. Like as we're speaking right now, she's up in the front yard setting up Halloween decorations because really? we have a lot of this with our neighbors. Like who? That's who, awesome. Who, 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 <laughs> yeah. That's so, awesome. Yeah. Did so, you get but, the um the the huge uh, Home Depot <laughs> thing? <laughs> she it was sold out. No. <laughs> No, I said, I'll really? split the price with you. If you go get it, I'll split the price with you. And it was sold out. So what she did find is if you're a Beetlejuice yeah. fan, she ordered the big inflatable sandworm. <laughs> so we're going to have a big inflatable. Oh, nice. Up front. Yeah, That's right. incredible. I just That's came awesome. up with a, uh, our next merch idea, and it's a dummy cab uh, 810. Yeah. That, like, a Beetlejuice or something pops out of, like, whenever you're in close proximity. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> right. Oh, that's so, great. What are you doing for Halloween, Dom? I am uh hopefully not gonna be scared or <laughs> put on the mask. Scary or anything <laughs> like that. I will be on my pre-wedding honeymoon uh in Bora Bora, which I'm super thankful for and so excited to do. Like my uh my fiance and I, we we waited well, we were supposed to get married in June and then we we're supposed to get married in October, and now we pushed it again till next year. Till whenever oh. things clear up. So, but we had this trip booked as our original honeymoon, and I can't even keep a straight face because that mask is terrifying. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's great. So, anyways, it'll be a fun, awesome, different trip because, yeah. It's all right. That's We're, awesome. Congrats. That's really thank cool. Thank you. Thank you. I'm really excited. And full moon. That sounds incredible. It sounds like it's going to be a, yeah. a beautiful evening. So, yeah. So I'm gonna get you, myself one of those masks. <laughs> yeah. Are you gonna join us on our next SVP time from Bora Bora? Okay. Uh, yeah. You know what? Call me. I'll call in for a solid five to ten minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, Bora Bora. That's oh, that's that's right? yeah. Is, it, is that the, the little that's little like huts the little, on the water? Yeah. Oh yeah. gosh, that's gonna be great. Yeah. yeah I'm so cool. excited. I'm so excited. I bet. I say five to ten minutes because I don't want to be trusted with any incriminating incri things that I might say in that five to ten minute slot. Yeah, you never know. <laughs> yeah, well, 
I'll try not to bother you when you're on your honeymoon. <laughs> Anyways, so I mean, we covered a lot of stuff here. Is there is yeah. there anything that, that oh, we? Wait. What? We want to you get, uh, Emma had mentioned something about uh, like a, another project that you're starting. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, just during this time, actually, I started this new project with um, uh, some girls, some women, or some talented women. And um, yeah, it was just it's a, a band and it's a girl band. Um, but so we're just sort of uh, doing doing some recording, doing some writing, and with some exciting uh, people. That um, but that's about about all I can I can that's mention awesome. right now. That's um, incredible. Yeah, just check out the uh, just check out the socials, uh, Instagram, Facebook, and we'll be posting about it. That's I cool. love that. I love that you can't talk about it. That means it's super, super legit. <laughs> I want to, but but yeah, not, yeah. not just yet. <laughs> no, it's totally fine. That's totally yeah. cool. Can't wait to hear it. But of course, we can't wait to hear the new Sick Puppies CD too. That's, you know, obviously yeah. we understand, you know, but yeah, I can't wait to, to hear it. Can't wait to see you guys on tour as well as everybody else and get back to some form of normalcy here as, as much as we can, you know. And uh, I just, sure. personal reason, I just want to start traveling again myself too. As much as I love being home, it's my kids are like, oh, he really is our father. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Tina, we, you owe me, uh, not you owe me, we owe each other a trip to Neptune's Net. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. absolutely. So, well, listen, I think we're going to wrap it up here. I, I think we pretty much. We're, we're just about out of time. I think we got like about, well, I, we can go as long as we want, but I, I, I don't know if anybody wants to see my ugly mug on YouTube and Facebook for at least another hour. But, uh, <laughs> is, is there anything else that, that we didn't cover? Are we, are we in, did we get everybody's questions in here? I think, I think we got, we got, yeah. yep. I'm looking, just making sure we didn't leave anything out here. Oh, we got somebody. Trying the uh, Ampeg effects. Oh, they said it's a little difficult getting Ampeg effects there in Canada. They're trying. Yes. Uh, okay. Might work it out online. So I don't, yeah, I don't know. I just saw that. Long yeah. McQuaid in Canada. I know uh, Haji had commented, or there's a lot of lot of Ampeg dealers in Canada. Um, there, there was also, I do want to point out, there was a gentleman here that, and we'll make this real quick, but I, I want to call this out. Um, uh, I can't find it. He was saying, I saw it come through and, and I, I didn't comment on it quick enough, but he's getting his first Ampeg rig delivered to him today. Oh, nice. So Ooh, I'm, exciting. I'm, I'm kind of jealous. That's like a cool experience. Like yeah, getting your first Ampeg week. experience. That's right. Yeah. That's, that's an awesome prezi. That's actually a great question for like Emma. What was your first Ampeg experience? We'll call it that now. That's we now Bailey, have Bailey Murray is the gentleman's name. So Bailey, congratulations on your new rig. Congrats, rig-ups. yeah. Congrats, Bailey. That's awesome. So um, yeah, first Ampeg experience. Yeah. Or well, your it first was, Ampeg rig. Ampeg rig. Well, the first rig would have been the the um, yeah the SBT SBT Classic with the uh, the four ten, and after that, after trying some other rigs. Um, I was like, well, it, it was just the first thing I noticed after trying some other rigs was the, that smooth bottom end, um, which obviously a lot of other rigs have, but there was something just different about it. Maybe it was the, the tubes. Um, it just like filled everything out. And I was like, okay, yeah, I get it. <laughs> so yeah. that, I never looked back after that. Nice. Love it. Yeah. Cool. Um, awesome. I'm just, I'm just looking at any other comments that, that we're looking at here, but I think, yeah, I think chicken, other than that, we didn't talk about chicken teriyaki recipes, but we can. Oh, oh we that. didn't. Didn't even come up <laughs> once. Not even. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, you know, we can, we cover anything here. So yeah. if you do have a I chicken like teriyaki recipe, we're, we're, or any recipe for that matter, we're always happy to share it. But um, until then, Emma, I cannot thank you enough for coming on board and, and joining this craziness that we call SVT time. 
Um, Love it. And thank you for making this what it is. Yeah. Thank just oh, be, thank you. No, perfect. thank you guys. Uh, it's yeah, I, honestly, it's an honor to do. I pr fully appreciate it. I, I would say there's one in the mail to you, but you, unfortunately, it's hard to mail an 85 pound ant. <laughs> learned but oh i know i could only imagine i wouldn't want that going through there I'm a precious <laughs> thing like, uh, yeah we, we've actually seen what happens to one of those when you do mail them right tom that it usually oh, ends no. up in a couple of different packages <laughs> yeah right <laughs> but yeah listen when when this is all over when covid's done we want to get you and everybody else out to out to calabasas and we'll have a big svt party and maybe we'll do an svt time live and and broadcast it for, for oh, that'd be cool yeah you know um so yeah like i said th thank you so much for everything that you do be safe be healthy uh everybody out there in ampeg land be safe be healthy Get your SVTs ready, because because <laughs> the time is coming. We're gonna we're gonna be playing live very soon. Right. So, anyways, very soon. Peace thank to everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you guys. Thank you, Dom. Thank you, thank you, pal. Thank you, man. Right on. We'll see you guys soon. See y'all. See ya.